you're listening to the Rebel Scum Podcast. You are always scum. Rebel Scum. From odds making to list rankings, we've got you covered. And don't forget to join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. 190 episodes of the go oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We should like halt right now because when this goes on the YouTubes and whatnot, Brock, the Star Wars holiday special, the Lego edition will be on Disney Plus. I don't know if you were on Disney Plus today, but there is a holiday holiday collection on there. They put yep. Noel on first, and then the Home Alone <laughs> four pack. If you're, I think only in Canada you get the four pack of Home Alone films. In the states, they now have one and two. But here we get all four of the the, the quadrilogy uh, amazing films that those are. But the holiday special, the Star Wars one, is out now on Disney Plus. We're not going to talk about it because we're recording this in the past. Yeah. But, uh, so let's pause and we'll come back in in a uh, half hour. <laughs> sure. I, if it's I don't even know how long it is, but I, I'm guessing it can't be that long. I'm guessing like a little over an hour. I feel. I wow, you, you think it's gonna be? There's that a long. lot to cover, and it's not like your typical Lego where they don't talk; they actually talk. So. Yeah. Let's. let's... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see what they do with it. Do you think you think we'll see someone like a Bo Katan show up in it? Well, I don't know. I don't know if the world's ready for that much Bo Katan quite yet. Um, but man, what a new episode of Mandalorian! <laughs> what were your thoughts, James? I feel like I didn't ask you. Yeah, we haven't talked about it, but I strategically try not to talk to you too much about Mandalorian mm-hmm. now, knowing that we're going to talk yeah. about it on the show. Uh, I liked it. It was really cool that they brought Bo-Katan in, and she obviously makes mention of the Darksaber, which we see Moff Gideon have yeah. at the end of Season 1. I watched it with Aaron, who is not um, versed in, in Clone Wars at all. I had no idea who Bo-Katan was, and she didn't flinch, obviously, when it happened. But, but I, I will say this. I, I love the show. I look forward to watching the show, and it's very enjoyable. And this 35-minute runtime... Anyway, there, there, there was a there, every episode for like a season and a half now has been, I'm going to go do this. I'll help you do that. But first, help me do this. Okay. All right. Thank <laughs> you for helping me. All right. I'll see you. And then it ends with him flying off. And I, I, I and I'm just watching like, yeah, I mean, because my issue now is that whole like obstacle in the middle i've almost stopped caring about what they're doing because i'm like well they're just gonna solve it and move on so yeah like it's it's like i get it and i'm kind of that trope is kind of i'm feeling the i'm feeling it's being exhausted a little bit much and i'm hoping that they can find a new trope to bounce on but other, i mean i really enjoyed it It was great seeing bo katan in action i like seeing two other mandalorians i like that they acknowledged you know what we've been saying for you know a year now like why can't he take off his helmet they acknowledge things like that which i thought was great yeah no it's it's uh it kind of floored me that i never really thought about like yeah the death watch were like the bad guys (laughs) like they were the extremists no like why were we like oh yeah the death watch yay <laughs> and i at no point did you and me you or me ever discuss i don't know if you ever had the thought but we never discussed it on the show that like the death watch was the bad guys so it's like as much as the show was very good at making them seem like good guys they were like at no point did we were like well like he's not in the, he's not with the right group of mandalorians but i guess we were you know, we came out and I was like, okay, this is a new type of Mandalorian, maybe. Or I don't know. That's what, how like... I that's how I kinda of took it. I never really thought hmm. like I thought that the Mandalorians were like wiped out and that was the end of them. Like what was in the underground layer on Navarro was it. You know, like I didn't know yeah. what was I, I mean, you know, when the Darksaber shows up, you're like, Okay, there's more. But yeah, I, I didn't uh it never crossed my mind. I never I never went there mm-hmm. in my head because uh you trust the show and i think that's one thing that this show proved again this week is trust the 
trust the process. Yeah. Don't pounce on things, baby Yoda haters. Uh, <laughs> things work out and end up all right at the end. You trust the process, trust the, the filmmaking. Now the TV making, I should say. You trust it all and it'll it'll get you to where you need to go. I I wish we didn't know Katie Sackhoff was going to be in this or that Ahsoka is coming. But I still, when Bo-Katan makes her first appearance, I'm like, whoo! Like audibly. I was like, oh yeah! <laughs> well, this is why I think going forward, I'm not even going to go online anymore. Like just no more <laughs> internet. Just screw off. Like I, honestly, it's like, I know like Disney Lucasfilm, they, pro- they obviously allowed these leaks to happen. But oh, the only reason yeah. these leaks were happen is because people want leaks because because these these websites and whatnot have to leak things so that they can, they can make a living. And I don't want to take away from anyone's job financial, you know, financials. But I, I'm also done uh, looking at leaks and caring about leaks because it's just nonsense. It's uh, interesting that you bring up leaks. You know, we should be really talking about the episode. But I think I said this a couple weeks ago, prior to episode two, chapter ten that they leaked the Funko pictures and one of them was this set of uh it's one of those like movie moment or whatever I forget what they call the series but it's like it's not just a Funko Pop it's a little like little set that they stand on and it's baby Yoda the child looking at the canister of Frog Lady I saw that one at EB Games the other day yeah oh it's already well yeah because like it was I think it was released last Monday for Mando Monday so um I was thinking about that when you and I were like off, not during the show. We're talking about the leaks and like this and that. And uh, people, oh, oh no, sorry, it wasn't that. It was people are trying to cancel Baby Yoda now because he's eating the eggs. Now that's interesting <laughs> because I don't think I know Funko makes the decisions on what they release, but I feel like Star Wars or at least Favreau and Filoni would not release an idea to Funko being baby Yoda with this canister of eggs, just as like off a whim. Like they make those decisions on purpose. Like you get these characters for a reason, maybe because they're like, ah, it's not that big of a deal, but like for it to be that like sort of jokey of a moment and then release it as a figure, even prior to the, the, like it, they had made it they had decided to make that before that episode aired so like there's got to be more to it perhaps it's a joking and maybe i'm just reading it too too much uh but like it's kind of a weird it is weird that baby yoda keeps eating these eggs and what have you but like there's got to be something there that like i think i think this yeah. episode we got the payoff of it and that was when he's with when he's with Frog Lady, which everyone, I love that that you can say Frog Lady and everyone's okay with it, but you say Baby Yoda, he's the child, then she's <laughs> technically the passenger. But anyway, she's, he's with the Frog passenger. Lady and Frog Husband, and and they kind of teach him the value of those eggs and the meaning because he he is a baby, he's a child, he's still learning, right? He doesn't know right from wrong, so he eats an egg because he's hungry. He's like, I want to eat the egg. But he went, but then when he's being looked after by these, he's kind of learning the value of life and to appreciate life and that it can come in all these things and maybe not everything he sees as food. So I think, I, I think that's what it was. It's we're seeing the progression of, of baby yeah. Yoda, which leads me to my next lap rock where Ahsoka is going to take baby Yoda, go in the <laughs> world between worlds and bring baby Yoda to 50 years. Year. Yeah. <laughs> Like 400 season. like to the high republic and yoda is going to train <laughs> baby yoda and baby yoda oh, yes <laughs> i thought you were going the other direction where baby yoda is yoda and then gets brought back oh, into time baby I yoda is that. yoda but for ba- for yoda to be yoda baby yoda has to go back in time to become yoda so <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that Aaron, uh, you watched it with Aaron. Reham just finished watching all three episodes, and she was like, "It's like so, like who is this character?" And I <laughs> wrote her the longest. Yeah. I have been dating her for close to three years now. She's a very important person in my life. I never send these long texts, and I'm amazed she let me continue. I did like 
So, like, basically, the Mandalorians are a warrior race. That's literally how I started the text. And it went on and on and on. And I explained how, like, all the connections to Clone Wars, the show, to this episode. And it's like, wow, that's a lot. That's really exciting. And, like, it's a lot with the Clone Wars. And now with Rebels, so it's like, it's like there's so many things that this episode, like, it. I think to the regular viewer, because I was explaining it to someone at work today too. It's like to the regular viewer, like they're cool. I think Katie Sackoff is a great addition to this, to this uh, cast. I hope she comes back. Um, but if you're a Rebels and Clone Wars fan, it's like this is huge because it's like we like to know as much about like Bo Katan uh, and Ahsoka as we can, and possibly Maul. He wouldn't be alive at this point. But like, what kind of ahsoka are we going to meet and i keep thinking it's going to be the ahsoka at the end of rebels do you agree or do you think it's gonna be something else um i think well it'll be closer to the ahsoka we see at the end of rebels my my one thing with ahsoka right now is uh, when she leaves to, don't forget she leaves with sabine to find ezra yeah but to your point is that before or after what we're getting now it yeah, does Baby so Yoda go, lead her on that journey to get to... Because she, she approaches Sabine, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of Rebels. Yes. Is Baby Yoda the key to her approaching Sabine? Oh, good point. Or Because I don't know... Like, anybody... Uh, any of her fans listening, like, put it in the comments. Like, Rebels... I, I gathered so far that the very last scene of Rebels has happened after the events of Return of the Jedi. But I don't yeah, know yeah, if, yeah, 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 because I think 100% they do, yeah. Yeah, so it but, could be 10 years, 5 years, it could but be that, before. But also the Sabine year. and Ahsoka one could be any period. Like, they never really specify. Like, a hair is a yeah. little bit more, like, it's here, but Sabine, you don't know. Like, it could be any time. Could yeah. they change Sabine's oh. hair also? So you're like, well, could have been 10, 15, 20 years. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious. I think it would be closer, but I, it depends on if. I'd have to believe it's after the Rebels thing, but then how do you explain the Ezra bit, right? So, yeah. and, then, and and you don't have to explain the Ezra bit to, to Reham or to Aaron or, or anyone like that, but to, to the diehards who all lost their cool when, Bo, when, every, when all the diehards went nuts about Bo-Katan appearing, those people need to know, and they deserve to know what happened with Ezra if you're going to put a soak after it. So it kind of leads me to believe that this is before all that. And, and, and the soak could be like, I'm not a Jedi. I'm not the one you're looking for. You're going to need, but I know where I can find a Jedi. Yeah. And then she goes to find Sabine. And then all of a sudden you have another spinoff show called the soak and Sabine live action, trying to find Ezra in deep space somewhere, which could be a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, it's... What, what do you think? <sighs> I would like whoa Apple TV Plus. Yes, Sorry. Oh, Apple TV. It's an Apple TV Plus. I thought uh, it was dance music. Like really uh, bad dance music. <laughs> Apple TV. Um, I would like to think that perhaps I think it's going to be white cloaked uh, Ahsoka. Yeah. Uh, I would love for Sabine to be in there. Because they keep talking about offshoots shows. So if perhaps maybe Sabine's not there. I think Sabine would be a good move, though it would be troubling to like, I think a lot of Rebels fans want to see that search for Ezra. Yeah. So that would be the problem. Like, oh, so like, are is that like an offshoot show they're going to do? I don't know. But I think Sabine being there would be really, really interesting because I feel like this season is going to be about collecting new Mandalorians. Like, we got Bo-Katan now, and the Mandalorian is now through the idea that the Mandalorians he grew up with weren't, like, the true Mandalorians or they were, like, crazy or whatever, however you want to spin it. Um, That his background, his his, like, his adoptive family isn't exactly what it seemed, which would fit pretty nicely in the star wars tropes uh but you know with boba fett perhaps making a reappearance at some point and he's trying to find more so if you bring a sabine wren in at the same time i think it'll be very very interesting though like we just said it's like bo katan doesn't mean anything to non clone wars watchers so it's like 
do you risk losing all your like as much as i love that dave filoni gets to put his new characters into things like i guess uh i don't know uh is okay. gonna be there, okay but- let's, let's say no sabine for sure like so there's gonna be prior to the last thing I'm, i think i'm with you on the on the no sabine as much as i like to see sabine but I, yeah. I gotta bring this up though to your point on possibly losing ca- ca- um, fans and obviously this is the scale of this is way grander but compared to like a rebels rebels didn't need to connect to clone wars at all it was no. you know disney was like this is it this is the new era this is what we're ushering in clone wars is forgot you don't need to go back to that but instead, just like Mandalorian, they waited. A, it was like the end of season one, wasn't it? When Ahsoka appeared at the end of season one for Rebels, and, yeah. and you kind of let it go through. So I don't, I don't know. I think there's a place for, it. and I think the way they've done Bo Katan and and Cobb Vanth even more so. Not that Cobb Vanth is has that rich a history with fans, but um, they, they're doing it in a way where. Bo Katan comes in and Reham asks you. Aaron didn't ask me anything, and my mom. I talked to my mom about it. Obviously, actually, she didn't ask me anything about that character either. They just kind of took it as, oh, that's another Mandalorian who's kind of showed up from another clan of Mandalorians, and I think that works for casual viewers for now. She yeah. mentions the dark saber, which is your little bread cl- breadcrumb for her to come back yep. with the Moff Gideon finale, and there's going to be some kind of huge epic war. I'm feeling coming with like ex imperials yeah possibly mandalorian but 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 maybe there's two factions of mandalorians now who are going to be at heads with each other as well so there's a lot brewing in the pot and it's going to be a four season show season three apparently is still coming out in 2020 it's going to come out in 2021 or they're shooting in 2021 i can't remember (laughs) but you know there's a lot going on i feel like they have an idea of where it's going and much like uh rebels which you know it knows where it's going you just have to have faith in in what's happening yeah it's it's interesting because it's like i feel like the last time ahsoka and bo katan are together is the end of clone wars season seven so it's interesting and then also the last time we see bo katan in rebels is she has the dark saber so like that's clearly that's gonna. I feel like we're gonna get a little bit of that for uh, fans like us. Uh, I hope it's not too much to throw off other people. Uh, it's 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 exciting to see a, like an animated character become live action. So like, and we're gonna see that with Ahsoka. I think uh, they tease. Uh, uh, well, you know, like the Ahsoka teases. Dave Filoni is has written and directed episode. <laughs> Five of this season he's the red director so if you were to guess and place yeah. a bet it would be she's going to appear on episode mm-hmm. five of this sh- of this season however i also feel like there is this off chance that they're like nah we're saving her mm-hmm. and they may it, i look i actually think she's going to show up in episode five but Tell me, tell me there's not a chance that she doesn't show up in episode five. She doesn't show up in episode six, seven, or even eight. And at the end of eight, it's like, no, no, no. She's up in deep space with Sabine Wren right now. And you're like, not. They don't say that exactly. But you get the idea that she's gone. And now he's like, well, I've got to find her somehow. Because then that put like, I, like I said, I think she is going to appear on Dave Filoni's episode, but it's just like you can milk finding this character for, sure. for so long and tease us along, and 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 the general audience isn't going to care. They're going to be like, "Well, that's the MacGuffin that you know you got to go find that. That's fine." But everything else is happening. It's exactly what yeah. I said. It's that trope, right? Like I need to do that, but you want to do that, but we got to do this, and that ends up becoming the entire series. Uh, so I think that's a, a possibility, but I don't think it's a probability. Yeah, it's just because because it's so throwaway how she's just like. I know someone who can. It usually in Star Wars, you stop it at that. It's like, I have an old friend. <laughs> oh, Ben, I haven't heard that name in a long time. <laughs> like, it's that sort of... Maybe they just don't want to do that Star Wars thing anymore. But you're totally fine. But, like, um, it's, it was just sort of throwaway. It's like, you're going to have to go find Ahsoka Tano. It's like... And but, there's no, like, ba-ba! Like, it's just... Because you know what the genius part of that is? 
mm-hmm. is you, me, everybody listening, watching here, and everybody you know on the social media, whatever, knows Ahsoka Tano. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the people watching it don't. And do you know who else doesn't know who Ahsoka Tano is? The Mandalorian. Din Jaren <laughs> has no idea who Ahsoka Tano is. Yeah. So the name means nothing to him, which, which is great because it means something to us. So we get super excited and he doesn't know why we're excited. But to the casual fan, they don't either. So they're just like Din right now. They're like, well, who's this? Who's, who are we going to go find? Who's this Jedi we got to go find? Yeah, and that's because yeah. to, to the general audience, the Jedi were all killed in the prequels. Then yeah. there's Luke. Obi Wan, uh, and again, I guess, uh, Ray. Like that's their Jedi right now to the casual fan, and they hear yeah. a different voice, a different name, and now so that's more intriguing in it. And I think it's brilliant the way they play it out like that because no one in the story, aside from Bo Katan, really knows who Ahsoka Tano is. So it works so perfectly, and and, it's, and that's why Bo Katan I think worked well. Well, also is because. Din Jaren has no idea who this character, who this person is. And because he doesn't know, it gives permission for the audience not to know. And, for, and then gives them permission to re-explain this character that we already know in a way that doesn't sound forced. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of this Ahsoka Tano system. Not a, not a system. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm... Reham's review of all three episodes was like it was good. There was nothing overly uh, surprising, but it was still a solid show. And I agree. Like it's, we've already said it. It's sort of like you you can't really if you're gonna try to outdo, you have to keep going where it's like wow, 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 wow. <laughs> but uh, I think this is maybe this is what they're going for, where it's like you can't just drop in a Luke and uh a vader or what i mean you can't but you know what i mean like it's like that that gets boring too where you're like oh we'll just drop in this like character yeah, I'm, from- fine. I'm fine without luke at all like i'm totally fine i was fine without luke in the sequel trilogy if they were i yeah. actually you know what? i i got i was talking when i was talking to aaron about this episode i said i think what they're doing with like bo katan and, and to lesser extent Cobb vanth and even and boba fett is what i think people were feeling like they missed out on with the sequel trilogy and that there was like it's the acknowledgement of what's come before and it's yeah. and it's the vin- vindication vindication for the fans in feeling like their time was worthwhile the investment that they've made on this franchise throughout all these years from from two years to 40 years whatever it's been you know you feel like okay this is it's all paying off now and i think i think some people i think when it comes to the sequels and stuff is this is kind of what people were hoping for in those but i mean we got a new a new akbar in a uh in a sweater so i mean that was cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i i i what did, i i think i said to you i like the misdirect they did in the initial trailer where you think sasha banks or mercedes Ardolos or something like that. That's her actual name. Sasha Banks is her WWE name. Uh, they put her in that cloak, and then they have the like, armor talking about Jedi, and they're like, "Oh, yeah. only Jedi wear cloaks." <laughs> uh, and then it turns out she's just another Mandalorian. Like I was just like, <laughs> "Yeah, I like that." And that's like you said. I think the 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 clickbait articles now with all the leaks. I'm hoping they. They go the way of the dodo because I'm yeah. tired of, of knowing that, oh, well, Timothy Oliphant's in it. He's probably going to play Cobb Vanth because he's wearing Boba Fett's armor. I don't need to, like, I don't need to know any of that. I like the show. Like, I told I didn't even need a trailer for the stupid show. If you, or if you just show me, like, put an ad on your Instagram or whatever, and it literally says Mandalorian Season X, October 30th. I'm like, well, I'm there. What's it about? I don't care. So it's Mandalorian. I'm watching the show. We like yeah, yeah. anyway. I'm, I just I, I don't like leaks. I didn't want like look at any of the leaks for for Rise of Skywalker um, yeah. when they were happening, and I think I enjoyed that movie a lot more because of it. I've said a million times. I read all the leaks for Attack of the Clones, and uh, it ruined that movie for me. And it is the greatest Star Wars movie ever made. Don't fight me on that. <laughs> don't fight me. Don't fight um, me. But yeah, it's fact. It was- I love it, it was, though. I'm just trying to, like... 
Well, I'll give it up to IMDb. They don't try to ruin very much. Uh, I feel like I did see, when I typed in Sasha Banks, it came up like she was in the fifth or fourth episode. Casca Reeves is her character. Oh, sorry. Nope, they've ruined it. Three episodes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that could also be wrong. Yeah, totally could be wrong. Because also, when you go to Katie Sackhoff, it just says uh, one episode. And then... Whoa. Axe Woes? That, yeah, so George yeah. Lucas is actually the one who named that character. Oh, cool. I didn't know yeah, that. George Lucas was on set, and according to the actor who plays Axe Woves, he says yeah. that George Lucas, when he when he went on set, it wasn't that episode, I don't think, but when he went on set, he named that character on it. So that is a George Lucas named character, nice. sanctioned by the maker. Um, <laughs> and it's... You know, I just I love that George Lucas is back on set for season two. It's just the ultimate respect of this is your baby, but now it's ours. And we... oh, this is the thing. Tomorrow Morrison two weeks ago it said Boba Fett. Now it just says nothing. <laughs> uh, well, his character wasn't obviously mentioned by name, so you can't. Yeah. But 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 just, his yeah. agency did leak it by accident, I believe. But I could, look, he could be. Any, I was talking to Rob. I don't think he could be Rex because Rex, I would have to assume, is dead by this point, right? With that, like the the quick aging process that they're taking, he, Rex would have to be dead. So Boba yeah. Fett, I think, is the only one of these clones that could be alive at this point in time. Yeah, um, sure. I, I, I I do believe he's coming back because of season one, if that was him in that uh, Fennec Shand episode. Okay, you've done that tease. Now he's back. You've teased him again, but now we've seen his face. If you keep that from everybody for an entire season, that just seems kind of lame to me. That's very like Maz Kanata, who's the girl in Force Awakens, where there's no point to it. There, I, I, there has to, I think there's a point to showing his face. And I think mm-hmm. him being in season one at the very end, that could have been like a last minute reshoot when they decided where they're going with season two. They could have been like, oh my God, you know what we need to do? We have to go back to season one. Yeah. And put that in there as a hint to this. Uh, Because that show, Bloodline, Bloodline, Bloodlines, the one on Netflix. Yeah. There is, same thing kind of happens, except the reveal in this first episode, Boba Fett happened in the finale of the first season, where someone showed up at the very end of the episode, you see them from behind. And I was like, that kind of feels like it was tacked on. And then at the end, they're like, oh, that's the guy, that's the person that was on the back and it's, it felt it was the exact same feeling to me where somebody showed up you don't see them and then the next season like oh that's them that's them but <laughs> yeah reham watched it and it's like that's so mean why did he leave why did mandalorian take the boba fett armor and not leave it with the sheriff <laughs> or the marshal it's like how's he gonna protect this the town now i'm like well you know who the guy at the very very end was like no it's like that's probably Boba Fett. And she's like, oh! <laughs> and that's, but again, yeah. if you don't know that's Boba Fett, when it, when oh, it, man. but when, like if, if, like, and I told Aaron, I'm a parent, but if you didn't know, if she didn't know that and then the reveal happens, I think there's yeah. going to be moments that we're going to have as fans, like Bo-Katan, mm-hmm. and casual fans are going to have, like, Boba Fett. And they'll be different at different times, but the same kind of, the same reactions are going to happen for different different events uh i'm really like they 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 know how to handle the lore the the characters in the lore very well it seems to me and i'm i'm really happy i just i just think that it it needs to take a risk it's at a point now it's like just just do like take a risk and i don't know what that means i i i don't know what that means but they just have to go a little bit out of their comfort zone and do something uh sticking with it being Star Wars, obviously, I'm not saying go crazy or anything, but um, I'm really excited to see the future of the show because it's it's clearly bright. Yeah, I think it's interesting this season. The Mandalorian seems to be like struggling a lot. Where yes, I like, know that too. It's not coming to him as easy as it as it used to be, and I'm like just thinking like, what is the difference from last season to this season? I mean, he's always in trouble, but he always is able to get out. I feel like it's this now that he has this connection with the child where it's like, I have to make sure he's okay. Even though he Mm -hmm. knows like he, like the child can kind of defend, defend himself at points, but like this is constantly happening. Like even like that, what's that sea creature in this, this episode where it's just like, yeah, (laughs) like it swallowed him. (laughs) 
<laughs> Luckily, there was like Bo Katan and her, her gang show up, <laughs> and they knew what to do exactly. Um, but it's just like, yeah, like the ship is <laughs> the ship gets it like just the crap kicked out of it now. It's like, it's like the more he feels for someone, it's 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 interesting how like he was successful as a lone wolf, and now he's like it's slowly falling apart because he's trying to like care for people around. Him. Yeah. It's, it's going to be more, it's going to be very curious when he, mm. is this a way for them just to get Pedro Pascal's face shown? Like, yeah, it's <laughs> like just like, Oh, here's an easy out for you. Done. It's good. <laughs> it's curious though. You're right. He's the more he cares, the more he is in trouble. I noticed that when they were walking down the hallway of the, the Imperial ship and yep. They they showed all the Mandalorians in the hallway and they all look very badass, right? And they're shooting away. And then it cut to Mando and he was like shooting. And I was like, he feels like he is out of his element here. Yeah. There was yeah. something weird about it. It's like I almost felt like he was the weak link in that group. And that mm. wasn't so, like when he was with the 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 bad guys last year, Bill Burr and all them last year, I felt like like he was the the strong one. He was the one I had full confidence in. But this time I was like I feel like I would want to be with any of the other three over him if I was, <laughs> if I was in need. So yeah, there's definitely a switch happening. It was, you know, is that intentional? Or are they going to yeah. make mention of that? Like, I think believe it's intentional, but will they make mention of it or will they just kind of let that be a character development shift that they'll just let slide and clever folks like you will bring it up. Yeah. 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 Anyways. I enjoy getting up at six in the morning on Fridays and watching this immediately. <laughs> See, I, I don't do that because I'm working from home. I don't actually do that. And Aaron wants to watch this. We like to watch that like lunch. Yeah. But yeah. last week, but here's, here's, this is, here's the thing. When the episode was like 50 minutes, it was like, oof, that's like a full lunch break. But 35, cause we were like, if it's an hour, we'll probably have to watch it later. I was like, Oh God, I just want to watch it. But I saw I was 35. I'm like, we'll watch it 35 and then I can go for a 20 minute walk. We are good. <laughs> so I can get that. That's how that's how my, I'm old. That's how my day goes. I need I need a half hour show and I need to walk. That's how my yeah. heart will stop, Rock. I am on my I am on my last breaths. It's gonna mm-hmm. it gets emotional when I talk about it. Um loved it. Yep. Definitely, 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 definitely. And this week's episode is directed by Carl Weathers. Yes, I keep forgetting to look up. But it's 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 amazing how mesmerized you can be by the end credit images. But like sometimes you just completely ignore what it says on it. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, this one was Bryce Dallas Howard. She had an homage to uh, Ron Howard, who I guess is her father. Um, for mm-hmm. Apollo, his Apollo movie, and uh, it was it was. I thought she did a, a great job directing this episode. People were saying how much better she did this one compared to last season. I thought she did a, gr- a very good job last season directing the episode. I th- yeah. I just thought that that was the weakest of the episodes, I guess. But I thought she did a great job directing it because I thought the eighteen the AT, AT&T, the ATST battle at the end. I thought that was fantastically done. I thought she had a, like she did a really good job last season. This season. Uh, she up the ante, I think. I thought she she can handle action very well. I find. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um. Uh, do you want to go to odds? Let's do it. Never tell me the odds. Brought to our Patreons, patrons from Patreon.com. Check it out. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. We got some stuff. If you give us some stuff. Uh, yeah, check it out. Early access and what have you. Some content when we have time to do it. And these are the wonderful people that support us, and we thank them: Heidi Feder, executive producer; Barry Brophy, Dennis Allen, Mary Kristen Athon, Jeff Wilson, Phil Staniforth, Sooner Thron, Scott D, Josh Price, Matt W, Rez, Frank Perkins, Neil Lowry, D Raven. Spencer, Gleek Play One, Automated Joy, Disney Desi, Charlotte, Kayla Davis, Aaron Quinton, Jericho Kane, Girls with Sabres, and the Den of Nerds. <laughs> what are the odds today, James? Hold on. I'm trying to change the graphic. Give me a minute. Today's odds are, are amazing. They're amazing odds. Um, so we were gonna, we didn't get to this at all, Brad, but we we're gonna talk about the George Lucas. We'll, we'll talk about this another time because I think it's a point. But the George Lucas, well, Marvel's gonna be the villain. I'm sure he was. 
Because there was also Jedi Killer, which is what they modeled the the, the fifth brother's design. Anyway, whatever. But it is. Yeah. I think George Lucas had a lot of ideas, and they were probably very good. I'm not saying that. Because remember when I did a video a couple years ago, Brock, about how George Lucas was like a great storyteller, and I got bashed for it? <laughs> it's on there somewhere. Now everybody's like, George Lucas is the greatest. J.J. Abrams is yeah. a hack. I'm pretty sure you need a, a brew. All right, uh, they've never told the odds. The odds that Maul is mentioned in Mandalorian Season 2. Will Darth Maul, or just Maul, be mentioned in Mandalorian Season 2? Before you answer, Brock, I must remind you, the armor, there was that, that theory about the armor, how she was part of it. Mm, yeah. uh, so I just want to bring that back to your for, back to the forefront of your mind before you answer this question. I think it's very likely that he'll get mentioned because Ahsoka and Mo Katan have this history dealing with Darth Maul on on uh, Mandalore. Um so I'm gonna go ninety-five percent. Uh I think I hope that it doesn't mean that he gets included in it. I, I think he should stay though he's I've dead. said Star Wars is dead. Star Wars uh is uh putting its money in Darth Maul and Mandalorians. <laughs> but like you could have a flashback of some sort. Um, I think he'll get mentioned though because I don't know, he's too ingrained. I think with Bo-Katan at this point, especially with the dark saber as well. So I'm gonna go. What did I say? Ninety percent, ninety-five. It, it's we. It's funny that you said that, that Star Wars is all in on Maul and Mandalore. Yeah, you have a movie that ends with Maul and radio silence <laughs> about it. Like the you have your in right there. Just continue his. Just continue the Maul thing. Like just. But anyway, yeah. uh, I'm going to go full Brock, actually, because I think I think you're right. I think it's like it, it makes a ton of sense. But also how far down that rabbit hole of information yeah. are you going to convey to the, the viewers? How much are you going to go? Because Star Wars typically, aside from like Obi-Wan giving the spiel about the Clone Wars to Luke it's, and, and Anakin, really, it's like they kind of just gloss over everything. They're like, well, you know, I had it until, well, I mean, he actually, you know what? That's a pretty, <laughs> I still could be like. Yes, Bo Katan was the leader of Mandalore until, or uh, Satine was the leader of Mandalore until Maul, you know, there's a, whatever. And then Bo Katan held the mantle until like, Moff Gideon arrived with the Empire. Yeah. I don't know. Moff Gideon is a, is a, a weird play for me now, too. Like, not a weird play, but in, intriguing to me. I'm trying to figure out what, what his goal is. Uh, so I'm going full Brock because I think it's very easy to do it, but also how far down that rabbit hole you're going to go. And if you do mention him, does that give you more of an in to create a mall series? Um, well, there's a there is a autocorrect right there. Ahsoka, never tell me the eyes. Ahsoka will not want anything to do with baby Yoda. I am no Jedi. Get the baby out of here. Yeah. I'm going to go go full Brock on this because I think this is a valid point. Like, maybe she doesn't want anything to do even if she knows what Baby Yoda is or not. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to go full Brock, 50-50. I, I, it's, there's nothing to say yes or no against it, and I, yeah. I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested in it possibly being a possibility. I'm going to go 40% because I can't do another full Brock. I just feel like that would be a cop-out. So I'm going to go 40% because I think she, she won't be – I mean, there is a part where she'll be like, I want nothing to do with the baby. But I also feel like because Luke essentially did that in The Last Jedi with the lightsaber, I feel like they're not going to want to go down the same type of path. So she might be reluctant um, at first, but I think she will want to help. And like I said, maybe that's that's what sparks that journey with Sabine to find Ezra because maybe she needs Ezra to come back and Ezra's the key to training baby Yoda for the future. But again, with the sequel trilogy coming, I can't figure any of that out. Although this new possible timeline, separate timeline, maybe that's where they figure it out. I don't know, Brock, I'm out of it. Uh, and our final lot today, the odds of Bo-Katan dying and Din Djarin becoming the leader of Mandalore. Will Bo-Katan die and Din Djarin wield the dark saber? If it does happen, it won't happen until the very, very end. I'm not specifying with no specification on what season. Just in the show. Uh, I don't like it, so I want to go low. <laughs> not terrible. It sounds like Game of Thrones to me, actually. 
Uh, gonna go forty five percent. It's possible. I mean, he's the main character, and if you're gonna throw in all the who wants to be part of the Mandalorians in a group, so he wants a family. That's all he wants, right? It, she, her death could be the could be his turning point. She could be his mm. Obi Wan. In a way that she kind of opened his eyes to what Mandalore really is. Mandalorians really are. And then she fights Moff Gideon. And Moff Gideon strikes her down. And Din has to, uses that um, to grow his progression into it. And then he ends up, not right away, eventually taking on Moff Gideon. And then he defeats Moff Gideon. And once he defeats Moff, Moff Gideon, he now has the support of all of Mandalore. And he brings all the tribes together. Under one mm. Mandalore. 63%. Sure. I'm going 63%. <laughs> Seems very, very uh, easy to do, John Favreau. Seems very easy. <laughs> uh, anyway, I if I'm wrong, I really don't care. AKA pre Vizsla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to go to the news? Let's do it. Hold on. Hollow news. Da 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 da. Hollow news. Do, 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 do. Okay, Brock, my mic is off. Da 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 da. Hello news. This is exhilarating stuff. This is why people, <laughs> this is why people come here. All right, you're good. Hello news. The news you need to know right now. So we were mentioning it earlier in the episode, Star Wars Holiday Special is coming out. And Cinema Blend did an interview with Anthony Daniels about his thoughts on the upcoming LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special. As some of you, or most of you will know, Daniels was in the in the notorious cult classic Holiday Special from the 70s. So he's very, very familiar with the slight uh, hatred and, I don't know, how would you call it, like, uh, ridicule of this ser- of this special. It, I Here's- have to say, it's executive producer Heidi's favorite Star Wars. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Of all. So, yeah. I wonder what her thoughts on Star Wars Holiday Special are going to be. But here's what he told Cinema Blend. He said, it was a ho- you know, what he thought that they were making. It. it was horror. It was. Are you crazy? People are going to sue you for bringing up this title again because they're, they only forgot in the first one 40 something years ago i was genuinely surprised that they would ri- risk awakening those dreadful memories anthony daniels and the next story uh, oh sorry it the, the it's already out now as of, of this taping <laughs> so check it out it'll be it's available as of november 7th exclusively on disney plus and if you like these animated series we keep talking about you will probably know who the bad batch is well the Black Series bat for the first two Bad Batch characters are are coming out right on the wings that they announced that there will be a Disney Plus show. Uh, it's clearly been uh, an excitement for most fans because they are already the pre-orders are already sold out. Uh, I, once they were available on Hasbro Pulse, so there's the show. The show is supposed to come out at some time next year on Disney Plus, but here you can see that. Hunter and Crosshair are the first two to come out. We'll be followed by the other two, which I cannot remember the names, but they look pretty sweet. So check those out. Uh, You might not be able to get one ideally right away, but it should be released in June of next year. Uh, In our last story, while doing an interview with IGN, Janina Gavenkar, who played Aiden Versio in the Battlefront 2 games, uh, well, just Battlefront 2, <laughs> has discussed that she made a secret cameo appearance in Chapter 11, The Heiress of the Mandalorian. She has worked with special effects artist Frank Ippolito many times in the past, who made and puppeteered one of the Mon Calamari headpieces in the episode. And due to their hist- history, Ippolito asked her if she was willing to help with the puppeteer a speci- uh, with that specific part of the headpiece. Apparently, she was the one that puppeteered the nostrils on on the Mon Cala that we see right here, uh, who's talking to the Mandalorian when he finally lands on, cannot remember what that planet was called, but it, 
immediately falls into the water. So when she was asked to do this, she immediately said, I F E S. <laughs> so fun little extra for you for this episode. And, and this has been your hollow news. Silent. Hello, hollow news. <laughs> that is the weirdest thing. I, my mic was off. Uh, there's two James mixers on here. Okay, hold on. I've got to find. We're going to top five right now. Today's top five is uh, fun. I thought it was a fun top five. Top five. Yeah. Uh, Mandalorian suits. Who's got the best armor in Mandalore? Who's got the best Mandalorian armor? Not necessarily the best characteristics, but their suits. Yeah. What, what suit do you want to wear? I want to wear them all. Do. <laughs> My number five, Bo-Katan. I thought it was really cool seeing oh. her mask in action, like the, the helmet in action. I really yeah. liked that. I really thought that was, I was like, oh, yeah, that looks great. With the night owls insignia on it. Oh, yeah. My number five is no surprise, Boba Fett, because <laughs> slash in the pan, folks. <laughs> he doesn't deserve to be higher up. Number five, but he deserves mention. Boba Fett's a hack. <laughs> um, Sabine Ren. My number four is going to be Bo-Katan because it's just like, it, it looks pretty cool in live action, I got to say. It did. Uh, but it, will Sabine look cooler in live action? <laughs> My number three, the armor. I really like the armors. Uh, I, I was a bigger fan of the heavy Mandalorian character, but the armor <laughs> looked cooler, and so I'm going with the armor on my number three. My number three is the Darth Maul Mandalorian suit <laughs> with his horns and the the black and the red. I'm like, ooh, that's my Garth really Saxon. Cool. Like, Mine's Garth Saxon, episode. same the same costume. Yeah, that's my. I love yeah, that one. Yeah. Great job on that yeah. one. That's my number two. What's your number one reader two? My number two. It's gonna be Sabine Wren. I really love Rebels and like. For a jokey sort of Mandalorian character, she really became really interesting yeah. by the end of the series. You know, like it's sort of like, oh, I like to graffiti, but also I'm going to reunite my people. <laughs> she had, they all had great arcs on that show. She is the only, yeah. um, and I have the, I think they re-released them, I guess, but I have the, the, she's the only Rebels character I have in Black Series is Sabine Wren. Yeah, they yeah they're all out now. Yeah, I don't have the new one. I have the I got a Star Wars Celebration uh, Orlando in seventeen because I was like, oh my god, I love this, and I got it because I yeah yeah that and was I, cool because it was like cartoon to like black series style like whoa yeah, yeah it was it was rad. Uh, and my number one, Django Fett. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I love me some Django. Boba Fett's not on my list. I don't know why, but I picked Django. I'm a huge Django fan. I don't care. I have the Django Black series as well. So, a... yeah, my uh, my number one's gonna be Mandalorian. I don't know. Maybe I just no. Maybe I'm just super excited about the show. But I just like, yeah, that looks cool. That also looks I, usable. I can tell you why Mandalorian is not on my list. So Mandalorian was on my list until the very end because I thought these ones were cool. But the Mandalorian is probably my. The, it's very similar to Django, mm. and I love the Mandalorian. But then I was like, which one do I like more, the new slick one or the used car one from season one? Which Mandalorian yeah, yeah, yeah. could I prefer? So which one would you go with, new new one or used car? I'm gonna go with the new one because here's the thing: it's like I like that we through season one especially get to see the progression of his armor. Like the armor is the reason why people think Mandalorians are cool. But to actually finally witness, like, first you get this part, then you get that part, then you get this. And when you when you prove yourself, you get a jetpack. Like, it's, just, it's like, I like that a lot. So I think that's why I like it, because it's like, there's more value to it. I'm you know 100% what I mean? with you. I like the new one as well. I, I like the and old I think one, that, but the new one is. Yeah. I think that's why I like, you know, Bo-Katan, because she has her Night Owls thing. You, you can get, like, it's, it's like the clones, right? Like, it's like, oh, Fives has a Five tattoo, yeah. and... There's like they're like there's a story in every little little detail of what how they dress themselves. So 
Yeah, huge fan. I think they have done a, a great job on it. This has been 190 episodes of yeah. the Rebel Scum Podcast. Reminder, you can listen to us almost everywhere you get your podcast: Apple Podcasts, Spotify. The Google Podcast is still on that. We got to. I got to get rid of that. We got to get rid of that, Brock. We have to. Because they don't exist. I, I'm trying to get us on Apple Music but, or Amazon Music, but we're not in. They won't let me because we're Canadian. And I don't know what's going on there. Uh, <laughs> iHeartRadio, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all those fun places you can find yeah. us at. Uh, you might be able to ask Alexa to play us. I don't know. I can't say it too loud because she's always listening. <laughs> uh, Alexa, play Rebel Scum Podcast. Hmm. I couldn't find Rebel Scum. Ooh. Rebel's gun. She couldn't find Rebel's gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's our side, uh, our side one. Uh, anyway, anything you want to bring up about the about it? Uh, no, I think you and I are going to try to do that Disney Disney Plus watch and do a watch along with uh, the history or history <laughs> Lego Star Wars holiday special. The history, no, we'll the, the history of the world. The history of Lego. Yeah, that would be fun. The best part of this right now is my internet seems to be slowing down. As soon as I mentioned yeah. the bot, it was like, no, oh, okay. yeah, crazy, right? Uh, it's breaking cool. down, but I think it's time to wrap things up. This was a lot of fun. Let us know what your top five are in the comments below or in the live yeah. chat or email us at rebelscumbags at gmail.com. It's always fun to talk Star Wars. We're going to be back. Are we going to do a review, a separate review of the uh, the holiday special, or do you want to just do it in the podcast? I'm always down. Well, you're going to do a separate Either. review. Look for that because uh, I can't wait to watch it. Maybe we, maybe, we should, maybe we'll do a side-by-side compar <laughs> -side comparison with the original. Do you think, wait, never tell me the odds. One final odd, never tell me the odd off the cuff. Never tell me the odds. Will there be an, a, an, an incredibly uncomfortable long sequence where a Wookiee watches some weird circus dancing <laughs> with flashing neon lights? Never tell me. The <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure. I feel like there's going to be at least five like direct references to yes. that holiday special. I'm pretty certain that the Chewbacca and his family are going to be in it and they're going to wear the capes. So, <laughs> but yeah, like, I'm still holding out that like, You'll hear the music from that, like the yeah. B. Arthur, the Starship, uh, Jefferson Starship songs or something like you, that. Is another or, band like, going to step in? That's the question. I'm excited for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be great. I don't know what Anthony Dan Daniels is getting all upset about. So. <laughs> because he's not in the – it's become like a cult laugh. Like We've all accepted yeah. it as it, but he's lived it, so he hasn't – it's different for him, I think. Also, like if you watch it, they don't credit him as Anthony Daniels. It just says and C three PO and R two. It's a it's amazing that he's come back at all. And stuff. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> all right, that's everything. That's 190 episodes of the Rebel Scum Podcast. He's Brock. I'm James, and he was always scum. Rebel scum. Cool. cool. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.